Hope everyone is doing good tonight. We are going to be in Matthew chapter 9 to start off with, and we'll end up in Mark 2 and Luke chapter 5. So we're going to be talking about Matthew and how Jesus eats with sinners and so on and so forth. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What did a you, slap in the face. <laughs> did you know that in overseas, many countries pay their patients, doctors pay their patients when they're well? And really? When they're, and when they're sick, they don't have to pay it. I thought that was pretty cool when, when I was studying. They get studying pay this. in advance. They get credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prepaid medical care. First, as far as this scripture, now this is Matthew writing what happened and what little bit we know about Matthew and his personality. I don't find it remarkable at all. He's able to write this in the third party, even though part of it is what he's He's there. He's, it's him, and it's all about him. Like, yeah, yeah. I say, I, he saw a man named Matthew. That was me, by the way, <laughs> sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, "Follow me," and Matthew just did. Yeah. Such, such, such bad people. Why does he go sit down with the sinners? Yep. Yeah. Why do you go to the hospital to visit well people? Well, you, see you the, don't. You go visit sick people that are down there that need encouraging and need prayer and lifting up. Why do you? Go to the gym if you're totally fit, or do you, or do you go to strengthen yourself? Do you go there just to sit around and drink water with your feet up and show off your muscled body? No, you go to the gym to work out, yep. and you go sit down to eat with sin with sinners, so you can be a good example to them and maybe able to answer their questions. And lo and behold plant a seed that leads to salvation. Yep. That's why. That's why he said it came. Yep. It came for the, for, for the unrighteous to repent. Yep. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Since the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the religious leaders wanted to beat people down. They wanted to fine them for their sins. And they fined them. They gave them a fine a sacrifice that they had to do. You got to bring uh, this much, whether it's an animal or whatever it is, of what you would do, and they know what they do. They, they know what their job is. They know what they have as far as physical wealth. You've got to bring this much of it to pay for your sins. Which brings us to Mark chapter two, if you want to turn there. Yep. Well, the, the, thing, the thing about they, these are probably not doing them sacrifices you're talking about. Yeah, they're, they're telling people to sacrifice, and Jesus is like, I, instead of sacrifices, how about having some mercy on people? Mm -hmm. I came for, to show mercy. Well, is, not to demand sacrifices and pain from people. Yeah, it caused them trouble. I came to give them love and compassion. Try that. That's what he's trying to tell them. Yeah, for sure. They they probably looked on them like they were lepers. Yeah, That's yeah. What the Pharisees probably do. Yeah, they looked at them as they were low life scum because mm -hmm. we're up here and you're down there, you scum. And you yeah. can come up here if you do what the law tells you to do. Yeah, bring your sacrifice. Yeah, but like you said, Jesus wants mercy, so, not yeah. sacrifice. So Mark, what David? Mark chapter two, thirteen through seventeen says this. Then Jesus went out. Now, this is the same story, right? So this is what we're doing. But this is, is Mark writing. Matthew's writing what he observed. And Mark's writing what he observed. Right. These are all eyewitness accounts we'll get into well, that later. No, Mark, Mark, Mark is 
uh, past that, he is getting his information from somebody else. Maybe, maybe he wasn't physically there. He was. That's what I'm saying. He was. He was. I guess uh, I, I know. I know when uh, he traveled with Paul, he was a young man, mm -hmm. and this could be this before his time. And one of the, he's getting one of this story from one of the apostles. He's a he was wet behind the ears when he went with Paul. <laughs> but it does say that he was a disciple though, Mark. Mark yeah, Mark. yeah, he was. A, so was Barnabas. Yeah, that's why they, they that's what they want. They wanted to they wanted to do what a disciple should do: go help and teach and train as they went along with Paul and. Uh, see, Paul Paul had a falling out with Mark, and he sent him back to, back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to Mark, chapter 2, while you were doing that, Don. Okay. <clears throat> then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were, that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw... Levi, son of Alphaeus. That's a tough one. Yep. <laughs> Love these son, these names. Yep, son of Alphaeus. Uh, sitting at <clears throat> his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as uh, as dinner guests, along with tax collectors and other desirable sinners, there were there were many people of this kind among Jesus's followers. But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, "Why does he eat?" with such scum. There we go with the scum again. <laughs> scum of the earth, yep. <clears throat> when Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people do not need a doctor. That's what uh, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who they think are sinners, who are sinners. Who know they are sinners. Very interesting. The Geneva Bible was a translation before the King James. Yeah. Yes. That's what came over on the Mayflower. Yeah. Very challenging to read. Um, because mm -hmm. the, the U's and V's are backwards to our current language. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Really tough. But in, in this story, is actually in Mark chapter 2. Uh, but a little further than that, verse 14, <laughs> okay? So there's stuff that gets moved around as it's translated, the stories are translated. What I love about what we're doing here is that regardless of where chapter and verse is placed, we're reading the stories and the details based off of observation and, and, and what, they, what happened from different perspectives and different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And in this one, as Jesus, or Lessus as they call it, passed by, he saw Leu, Le, Levi, L-E-U-I, but that would be pronounced Levi, yeah. Yeah. at mm -hmm. that time in the English language, yep. <laughs> at the receipt yeah. of custom. Okay? That's what they would call a tax collector's booth. Yeah. Today we would call that the IRS. Yeah. He's sitting over at the IRS office <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at him and said, follow me. And he just arose and followed him. Yeah, that's the biggest miracle of all of this. Well, if you read it in, 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 the, in the context, and I would highly advise someone get this Chronological Life Application Study Bible. It is... My favorite, and which that's pro probably the same. I guess it is basically the same, right, David? I don't know if it's a study Bible, but it's a chronological Bible. Yeah, it's a study, see, this is a study Bible. This is one that I um, think that 
that this translation misses a point of? Where did they go to have dinner at? So Jesus is eating with Matthew's house. At Matthew's house. Yes. Matthew, Levi, same word, mm-hmm. same name, different, same person. They get went to his house. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, now Levi or Matthew yep. had a big house, private home. Yeah. Why? Because he's a tax collector and he could have, he lived up at the big wig town. Yeah. Why the tax collector? Why are the 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 the, the these Jewish uh, religious leaders? Why are they over at Matthew's house to see this? See, you look at a story and you, you can't just read it. Yeah. You got to picture it in your mind. See, there's a clue here in Mark that was not in Matthew. Oh, okay, I can tell. It says the first in the first verse, then he went out again by the sea, and all the multitude came to him and he taught them. Yeah. So who else is in that multitude? The, 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 the Pharisees. The, the and Pharisees and Sadducees yeah. watching to see what's going on, spying. Well they're they're waiting for him to make a slip. Yeah. So but yeah. but they go over to Matthew's house for dinner. Now in this in the the, the to series the chosen yeah. Matthew says comes and joins him okay Matthew had because he's working for the Romans he was had was slightly acquainted with the teachings of mm-hmm. Jesus and marveled at it he was just blowing his mind but he's an outcast nobody will have anything to do with him he has yeah. to be real careful or somebody some other Jew will just come up and just bust his little head wide open or stab him or something they kill him because if your taxes are a thousand dollars, he's going to collect twenty five hundred fit pocket fifteen and give the Romans of that thousand. Romans are happy, and Matthew's happy, and the people are like, Rrr! you know, yeah. kind of like our our best today. Well, they know he's getting a cut, but so they go <laughs> over to, and, and he says to Matthew, he said, uh, "We're going to have a feast tonight. We're going to have a, invite some of your friends." He said, "Who's where's the party at?" Your house, your husband yeah. in it. Matthew's like, really? Well, that, I get to, I get to host a party. See, Matthew would <clears> never <throat> have been allowed to do that, except with other uh, tax collectors yeah. or publicans, which are low-level to mid-level Jews who worked for the for the Romans to, admin, to as administrators, right. like the public works director and the water works director, maybe the chief of police and the fire chief, those kind of folk in our day, that's yeah. who he would have had over to his house. Maybe the assistant mayor and some of the council members. They're working and coordinating and cooperating with the Romans because they have to, well, why are they over there? Or were they spying or were they over there having dinner with some publicans and, and sinners too? Yep. So David, go ahead. Don't know which. We don't know why, yeah. but they were there, and they said, "Why is he over there eating with them people?" Because yeah. they invited him to dinner. Well, no, actually, Jesus said, "No, y'all are hosting me." It seems. Uh, I, I, th- I think it was. It might have been the chosen or, or another another video on on Jesus. The the festivities were held in the courtyard of the home. Yeah. Well, if they had a they had a, a, a wall that may not have been so high you couldn't see over it. Yeah. So. If but it were, may have simply been that they were sitting out there, as you said, they were cut, following along and watching, mm-hmm. and they saw them all enter through this gate into this house. Really? And okay. they're bringing food. All this food's going on. They can hear the party going on. Yeah. And like, why is he in that party with all them people and eating and having a good time? They think they got him right there. That right? they think yeah. they got him. <laughs> so Jesus, what they're probably thinking is Jesus is a sinner too. Exactly. Don't yeah, that's what they're thinking. Yeah, for sure. Because they know he ain't a tax collector. Right. Yep. <laughs> After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. 
and their scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Mm -hmm. and Jesus answered and said to them, uh, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So last verse, let's go to Matthew. I'll, I'll just read it. 9-11. <clears throat> okay. then, then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy not offer sacrifices. Now remember, back in those days, they had to, in the Old Testament law, you had to sacrifice to yeah. cover the sins. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about that. Scribes and the Pharisees, these are the teachers of the law. Yeah. But they didn't understand the meaning. He said, well, go and figure this out. Go learn it for yourself. Exactly. Because see, it's in the original scripture, Old Testament scripture. Yep. But they were leaving that part out when they could collect some money. Yep. This is what makes me sad, David. Here you got the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, the Sanhedrin and the scribes, and they're taking advantage of the people and taking the sacrifices that they're ordering them to do, and they're living well off of it. Mm -hmm. And then you got the tax collectors working for the Romans, so they're collecting more taxes than they should. Yep. What exactly do you think mm -hmm. that's going to happen in the end? You know, yep. you're going to have an uprising. You mm -hmm. can't take seven or sixty percent of what people make as the Roman government. Yeah. With after the you know the the, the, the tax collectors take an extra little piece, and then turn around and go to the Pharisees. And try to go to church, and they like, ah, give it up, boys. Yeah. Give me more. And, and what are we supposed to live on? What are our children mm -hmm. supposed to eat? What are we supposed to use for clothing? You're taking everything. Now, to finish that passage out, <clears throat> for I have come to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Now, it's interesting, that one ends with sinners, and so does. Mark's passage. I'll go ahead and read that one. When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Now Luke adds an interesting and probably the most important detail. Uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 32. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and they need to repent. You see that that minor detail that Luke gives is, is repent. You always have to have repentance. Now, I read th this a few minutes ago. You think you're righteous because you you're sacrificing? Well, you know, the sacrifice is symbolism in the Old Testament for Jesus' blood on the New Testament. I was reading in Exodus the other day about the blood on the door. Yeah. Guess what? It doesn't matter what was going on on the inside. They could have been the worst people. It, what it was is back then it was tradition, right? You know, you have kind of like a superstition, right? Death but, angel was coming. And they were instructed, so this, this is a new thing for them, but yep. they still do it now, to take the blood of the goat yep. and basically swipe it or mm -hmm. paint it on the top and the sides of your doorway so yep. that the death angel will know that you're Jews. That's true. Yep. That, yep. that I've called you and I've told you how to not die. Because these other people I haven't told. Now, do you think that maybe there were some of the Jewish people that didn't buy into the story? Well, sure. Sure yeah. they would. Yep. Some, some of this, the church members of this church or another church are going not going to buy in 100% to what they're told to do. Guess what? There was wailing and gnashing of teeth there too as their firstborn died. Those Jewish families... 
if they didn't do what they were told, yeah. we're told also what to do. The New Testament, again, I agree with you, it starts in Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John yeah. are the Gospels. They are the story of Jesus and how that we got to the point of a New Testament church. What brought about that change? Um, that acts and on up until Revelations tells us how. It gives us every example of everything we may face in life. Every six, this is 2,000 plus years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. And yet, everything that in our technological age that we face in everyday life mm -hmm. is found in Acts up until Revelation. Revelation is a different book. It's a different thing. That's the future. Yeah. See, so, so you got to stop. I don't believe that Revelation is in the New Testament. It's in the future Testament, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, and that, gee, where did that come from? Okay, so you got the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the current. Yeah. And then you got, starting in Acts, you got the how to do what Jesus said to do. You got the church age. You got the church age, how to do this. And then you have Revelation, the future age, the end of it all, mm -hmm. and the transition to a new earth. So who is this Matthew? Well, we know he was a tax collector, but can any of you tell me some of his strengths and accomplishments well he wrote the book of matthew <laughs> he wrote that book uh well i think number one is the most important thing he was one of the disciples of, of jesus he was a first-hand disciple he hung out with jesus and he became an apostle that is some awesome sauce right there yeah he hung out with Jesus a lot, according to, I know it's in The Chosen that he helped write, but see, Matthew was very educated. Unlike the most of the rest of them, who were fishermen, very poorly educated, hard workers, strong back, weak minds. Yeah, but he's very educated. Yeah. Yeah. He can read and write. And I think that's why he's portrayed, And but I've also heard, read about this by other commentators, that he probably helped or did write the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. Long before the Chosen picked that up, they picked that up because if anybody helped Jesus write down the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. it would have had to be Matthew of the people that were there. Yeah. Because he's the only educated, like college level educated dude there. Yeah, he was uh, in the Chosen, he's going around like writing a diary. Yeah, was, like and doing. that's where the book of Matthew came from. He wrote down every day because he was into details. Yeah, like like this this scripture right here, uh, in, uh, where it says, uh, "I desire mercy and not sacrifice." Yeah. Well, all of them agree with that specifically. Yeah, the thing you see, he he got that out of the Old Testament. This is what Hosea six six says. For I desire delight and steadfast loyalty, faithfulness in the covenant relationship rather than sacrifice, mm -hmm. and in the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Yes. Learn, the Father, stop focusing on what you pay to get because of your sin, and try to stop sinning. You, you, don't, you, know, you don't need sacrifice if you just try your best to stop sinning, yeah. duh! It's like when I when, when, when I talk to somebody who's a criminal, because uh, I used to be a policeman, and it's like you know you wouldn't need a lawyer and you wouldn't need the court, you wouldn't have to ask mercy from the judge if you just stopped doing that in the first place. Stop now, dealing the drugs, stop stealing stuff, stop doing the wrong things. How many crimes could be so easily permitted? with just not doing it, you know? Just don't do it and you don't get trouble in the first place. Exactly, that's good. But that's guess good. what? 
Satan draws us to crime. He draws us yep. to breaking the law because first of all, he knows the law. And secondly, he knows what kind of trouble and what kind of pain it's gonna cause us when we violate the law. Yep. Whether it's the law of God or the law of men, how many laws do we have that are just absolutely ridiculous and wrong, physical laws of this earth, because they don't go along with the law of God? Evangelize them. Don't, don't uh, treat yes. them like lepers. Yes. Don't treat them. Get, them. get them to follow the law. Mercy says, wait a minute. We're taxing you too heavily. How about if we cut your taxes so that you can take the Shabbat off? What a difference in the story. Either so many lashes across your back and paying a fine that you can't afford to pay. You're fishing on, 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 on Shabbat because you're hungry and the Romans are getting ready to take everything from you because you can't pay your taxes. Instead, show mercy and say, you know, I, I get it, man. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like the, 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 the Pharisees here, the, you know, like, uh, the story of Zacchaeus, he got convicted and said that he would pay back so much, and so it, it's it's the, the the Pharisees are kind of like the politicians. Yes, they go in, they go in poor and they come out rich. Well, we were going to end the first session there. <laughs>